Hey guys, my name is Ismas and welcome to Top Channel 101. So today a new version of Blender has been released, not officially, but uh, if you are into daily builds, uh, these are versions of Blender that have not yet been officially released on the page, on the website. Uh, you can go to builder.blender.org slash downloads stroke daily and I should be able to get any of the versions you want. I'll be leaving a link in the description. Uh, you can get uh, Blender 3.2, which is the better version, but uh, also 3. Uh, Blender 3.3 has already been released. This guy's head sleeping. Uh, I guess that's why they are better than Maya and uh, 3ds Max. Uh, so yeah, let's get into the daily uh, the release release notes uh, so that we can see what has been released and how exciting it is. I've just picked up a few a few of the things that uh, excite me most, but uh, they are more than a few. Uh, that I'm going to be showing you here that are uh, new features that have been released. So if you want to get uh, the feature releases that have been uh, released, you can go to, uh, I'll be leaving a link in the description for you to just click on and uh, get there. Uh, so you can see the versions that are currently active. I see uh, this is 2.8 and 9.3 and then this is the official release. Uh, but uh, now there is a version 3.2 beta and then uh, version 3.3 .3, which is in alpha uh, they haven't really done much here uh, you can see uh, all the things in red haven't uh, been updated but uh, you only have these blue links uh, that are active so that means that uh, they have some updates in the, those versions so uh, but I would recommend to just go with the uh, 3.2 which has a lot of improvements and new features uh, for example a glitch Pencil. I don't really use it that much, but uh, there are a few updates. I want to really sh look at uh, the new multi-user data and uh, geometry nodes, uh, asset browser, and uh, the features that I mostly use. So yeah, with multi-user data, now you can, if you have a few objects, uh, let's say you use, let me turn on my random colors here so that I can see the objects. So if you have objects like this and use Alt-D to duplicate them, alt D to duplicate them into instances. Uh, you can, uh, whenever you make a change here, it's reflected into the other objects because those are linked objects. And uh, normally, if you wanted to say apply the rotation or scale of this object and uh, use Control A or go on an object, uh, user data apply. Now, if you should just use the shortcut Control A and try to apply the scale or rotation or location, it will give you an error. But now, now it. Uh, just lets you create ask you if you want to create a new user data which will be which will no longer be linked to the other object so uh, instead of just giving you an error let me see if i can uh, open up blender quickly the 3.1 i'll just show you how and now how different this is uh, because it was a bit fr frustrating uh, to just have it break whenever you try to do it uh, so let's say you have it's a simple thing but it uh, does quite a lot so this is the previous version and uh, you can see they are all linked. If I tried Ctrl A, apply scale, I just get this error. And uh, the way to fix that is uh, I'll just have to right click. Uh, we just have to go to object, uh, data, user data, link, user data, and I just, where is that? Uh, it should be, uh, relationship, relations, uh, make single user and then object data and then now if I apply it's okay so now you no longer have to get that error you don't have to go through those steps every time you want to uh, apply or settings or make an object a single user data you just single user object just use Control a apply and then it will ask you whether you want to apply those and now you can you don't have to get uh, that error anymore it's no longer linked to the other objects which is amazing simple but very very helpful uh then uh another exciting feature that i like is uh in the yeah let's first look at uh colors in sculpt mode so sculpt mode uh, currently has not had uh, colors you only had the ability to sculpt uh, but now you have uh, colors you can even sculpt colors let me first apply some resolution to this object and now we can go to sculpt mode sculpt mode now if you scroll down you can see that uh, there is now a, a paint brush a color paint brush and now uh, you can paint over uh, your objects uh, with different colors you can select the colors you want so I can uh, paint a blue there I can green and if you hold on control you can con you can uh, use the other color so control and then if you left just left click it gives you the other color so and uh, you may be wondering where do i use these colors all you have to do if you go out of object mode let me go to material mode here new material i can use those colors by using them as 
color attributes so you can import that in and i can see now we have those colors directly in i i guess this makes uh vertex colors a bit redundant but uh, I th do they let me see let me see uh can we have because in uh in vertex colors you can paint dirty vertices or dirty vertices which just gives you a highlight over the edges and uh, let me see the difference uh, so let me show you the difference a bit here i'll go to new vertex color attributes first get rid of this and i just do it directly with a uh, vertex paint uh there is this feature that does uh dirty vertex paint in vertex colors in uh in edit mode in vertex paint i guess that's one feature that is not available or maybe it is i haven't just explored it uh this a lot yeah so i think they they, they should be merging this all into one mode because uh, I don't see any reason why we would need uh, two things that do the same thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's my opinion. So then uh, you can also go to the release notes and see how this is being used. I just play for you the demo here quickly. You can see how it's being used to paint uh, the room quite nicely. But the one thing you have to note is that you don't just paint directly onto the mesh. The mesh needs to be subdivided. For example, if I try to uh, paint onto a plane, Go to basically the way the same way that uh, vertex paint works. You can see that uh, I'm not able to add paint until I have some good subdivisions on this. Uh, that's when I'm able to paint. Uh, so let's go to the next f exciting feature, and that is uh, yeah, there is volumetric. Uh, let me just go through these uh, uh, cycles uh, features. They're not that exciting, but uh, uh, there is light gr light group, so you can group lights to light up different scenes. Uh, I think uh, there is a Blender Blender who uh, th there's a YouTube guy. Uh, is it Blender guy? Has a nice explanation on how uh, light groups work, so you can uh, search light groups. It's a it's a it's a long explanation uh, to just explain it in a simple video like this. Uh, there are also now caustic shadows, uh, and uh, I guess uh, there was I rarely use cycles that much, so I, I wasn't sure that uh, they weren't. So yeah, there are now caustic shadows. They weren't, I guess. Uh, then there is also volumetric uh, motion blur. Uh, which uh, basically just adds motion blur to uh, your volumetric renders, uh, which previously wasn't. So that's another exciting feature, but uh, I'm excited to more features that I use. Normally, uh, there is uh, the asset system or the asset browser has a new feature, and that is collections, the ability to import collections. Uh, previously, you weren't able to use collections in the, the asset browser, and uh, also you can now drag uh, materials directly into your... Uh, materials tab let me show you how the new feature works so if i have a new project here and uh, i'm just going to use my asset library because it's much easier for me to import things in i uh, just to demonstrate how the asset browser works so uh if um let me search for a house uh, this is a collection my my version of the asset browser supported collections right from the start so uh, that was um, no issue for me i just use it because it's much easier i don't need a separate panel i just access it and if i want to hide it i just hide it like that simple uh but uh, for anyone who wants to use the asset browser it n does now support uh it does now support uh the collections feature let me first make this into a collection so you can see this is a collection so if we go to the asset browser asset browser asset browser asset browser where is that it is here uh, you now have the ability to add this as an asset so i can uh, just link mark as asset mark as asset and you can see now you get this as an asset and it gives you a nice uh, uh preview so you can import this as an as a collection as well so like that and uh, the center of this collection is always going to be let me first hide uh, this uh, the center of this collection is always, is always going to be the location of uh, the collection within within the 3D space. So you can see that uh, now that I moved that, uh, the center of the collection is uh, there. So this is a nice feature. And uh, yeah, the only issue I have with Asset Browser is its usability when it comes to re-importing stuff uh, in a different project file. So for example, if I save this uh, in or somewhere, uh, play a new project, bring back the asset browser 
there isn't an easier way to search. So if I try to search here, you have to do a lot of set setup to reuse the assets you have used, which I there is which is the reason why I made the asset browser my own version, so I can just search for house if I want to. So by the time you set up the the importing thing, um, I'm already done here. So yeah, by the way, if you want to get the asset browser, the asset my asset library uh, link is in the description. Uh, it also supports the channel. Uh, anyway, let's go find uh, other stuff to look at. Uh, so the asset browser we have looked at, smoke. Uh, he, yeah, demo files are every time they release a new version of Blender, they release the uh, the screens the screen. I mean. The splash splash screen. Let me see. Can I get that? Uh, system info. No, no, no. Work. Splash screen. Splash. Let me just open up. Reopen Blender just to show you how this splash screen looks. It's really exciting. Looks great. Unfortunately, because this is still in beta and is not officially released, you won't be able to download the uh, the splash screen just yet until it's. Uh, officially released that's when you will see it in the library here I also think I'll be leaving this link here so that you can see all the uh, splash screens and you can download them uh, very easily by just clicking the download link here I can go through all the other releases and see the splash screens and the project files if you want to get them so right from uh, blender 2.7 uh, 7 uh, which looked like this uh, I remember this was uh, uh, crypto mat then this was when uh, Critum Art was introduced. So yeah, if you want to check out the uh, the release notes or download the release this version, uh, you find the link in the description. And uh, any links that I've said to be uh, I've said I'll be linking, I'll be adding in the description as well. Uh, maybe finally, what I can do is uh, uh, yeah, let me uh, leave you with a quick promo of my new add-on, Quick Scatter, which lets you scatter objects quite easily. Just add them to uh, a list here and uh, then be able to scatter them by uh, holding down shift and then clicking anywhere you want to uh, scatter uh, the objects. It will pick the objects randomly depending on how many objects you have in the scene and uh, add them. If you have one, then we'll just uh, add that. I also have this ability to draw uh, and uh, objects in, uh, in a line like that. So yeah, thank you. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.